Senator Murkowski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you for, for conducting not only this hearing um, this morning, but uh, the informational um, sessions that we have had where we have gained information from, um, from various st states' uh, uh, insurance commissioners, because I, I believe you are proceeding in a manner that is very open, very careful, and uh, really very considerate, just as, as Senator Kane has, has asked be done. And I appreciate that uh, a great deal. I appreciate the fact that you're trying to focus us as a as, as policymakers on the, the area that is really troubled right now, and this is the individual market, and to, to look specifically to how we can provide for the stabilization. Senator Murphy uh, asked or raised the issue of, of we need to know the baseline. Well, I can tell you in, in my state, in Alaska, before the ACA was passed, the information that we got just this morning from, from our state's insurance commissioner, who is, is here with us uh, this morning at the hearing, as well as our Commissioner of Commerce and Economic Development. Uh, before the ACA, we had four carriers in the state. That's not a lot, but we had four. Now we're down to one, and the real concern is whether we will even have one next year in 2018. That before the ACA, the average cost for an individual uh, for uh, their plan was $251 a month, and now uh, with implementation of the ACA and the fact that we do not have competition and that we are a high-cost state, it is $800 a month for an individual. So if you are a family of four, Alaskans are suffering, and, and the decisions that they are making, uh, they've got to make a decision as to whether they pay the mortgage or whether they cover their families. And this, this is a situation that is not sustainable. So the focus on what we can do to provide some level of, of stability. And I appreciate the very concrete suggestions that have been laid down here this morning, whether it's the grace periods, a special enrollment, uh, talking about essential health benefits, benefits flexibility. Uh, there's been some discussion about the age bands. But drilling down into some of these things that could make a difference for, for families like mine in, in Alaska. You know, we, we're talking in our state about the need for an Alaska plan, something that is very Alaska specific. And, and Ms. McPeak, you kind of talk about, you know, the flexibility to have a Tennessee plan. So whether it's the Cassidy, Collins, and the direction that they are taking to be able to recognize that flexibility is, is, is clearly what we need given the, the situations that we have in each of our states. In Alaska right now, we're, we're doing some, some innovation that is helping to stabilize. We had, we've worked on some major reforms uh, through the state in the creation of a reinsurance uh, program for high cost, high risk individuals. Um, it's helped. It still leaves us with, 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 uh, with high costs, but it has helped keep the premiums from skyrocketing. And uh, we have moved forward with a Section 1332 innovation waiver. And Mr. Chairman, if I may, I would like to submit for the record um, the letter from our state's director of insurance uh, to you outlining the situation in Alaska and some of the innovations that we have seen, if I may. Yes, and, it will be included. And then the question to you, Ms. McPeak, and this, this will relate to the state innovation waiver, the 1332. We have, we've, we've worked through the process. It's been difficult. It's been costly. It was about $200,000 just to submit it. Can you speak as a member of the NA, NAIC um, to what you have heard from various states that might be pursuing these types of waivers, what the challenges they are, because we look at this as one way to gain flexibility. It hasn't been raised in this discussion yet this morning, and, and how we can either improve or, or evolve this process so that it allows the states the flexibility that they would need. 
Thank you, Senator. Uh, the information that I received from my colleagues across the nation in, in terms of insurance commissioners is that the innovation waivers might be helpful, but the time and the expense associated with completing the application and shepherding it through the process is only one that is undertaken when there are really no other options available in the state, as, Which is as Alaska, Alaska has situation. experienced. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think other states might be interested in pursuing an innovation waiver if the process could be simplified or streamlined in any regard. And would you be in a position to help us divine what, it, what, it, what we could do to make it more efficient, to make it a more simplified process? You know, we're, we're pioneering with, with the Alaska 1332 waiver, but we, we recognize that we've got to make this more user friendly. Our members are absolutely willing to work with you to uh, provide some recommendations on streamlining that process and, and improving this, the system. Thank you. And Mr. Chairman, it, it came up in discussion this morning that these state commissioners, again, are an amazing resource and, and, and can help us identify those areas that we might be able to move more readily to provide this stabilization in the short term through the administrative uh, and rather than the more lengthy legislative process that, that we engage in here. So I would certainly encourage um, recommendations from our state's commissioners as to how, from an administrative perspective, we can, um, we can be the rescue team that we need to be more readily. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Murkowski.